This is the new LG G1 OLED and this is the new webOS 6.0 smart TV platform which has received a substantial makeover. In terms of the picture settings, there have been more changes than Simon Cowell's face over the years. So I'm going to explain each individual picture setting to help you improve the picture quality on your 2021 LG OLED TV including the C1 and G1. Keep watching. Hello everyone, Vicentio from HDTV Test here. I am a former professional calibrator who knows a thing or two about TV settings. If I summon the picture menu on this LG G1 OLED which has just been set up, you can see that out of the box, the picture mode is defaulting to Eco, which in my opinion is far too blue for an accurate picture. But before you even begin to switch the picture preset, you should go into the support submenu and then go into the energy saving submenu and change energy saving step from auto to off. This will prevent the TV from changing the picture on the fly depending on the ambient lighting in your room. Now, in previous years, LG has always put this setting in their picture submenu, but this year they somehow managed to put it in the support submenu, which may be quite difficult to find. After that, if we go into select mode, you can see that there are various picture presets here ranging from Vivid, which is the most dynamic shop mode, and then Eco is the out of the box picture mode, and then you get Cinema, you get Sports. Game Optimizer is the new name for game mode, and then you get Filmmaker mode, which in my opinion is the most accurate picture preset on LG TVs for 100 nit SDR viewing, and then you get ISF Expert Bright and ISF Expert Dark as well. But this year, LG has seen fit to expand the labeling into ISF Expert Bright Space Daytime, which is a mouthful, and then ISF Expert Dark Space Night for nighttime viewing, obviously, which is again another mouthful. But what we're going to do is to select Filmmaker Mode, which is going to be targeting a peak white of 100 nits for SDR viewing, and then Aspect Ratio will allow you to select different aspect ratios and also disable overscan if you so wish. And then if we go into advanced settings, you can see that there have been some radical changes here compared to previous years. So what LG has done is to put these picture settings into three main categories, brightness, color, and clarity. This is reminiscent to how Sony has divided its picture menu into brightness, color, clarity, motion categories as well. And then if I resist the temptation to go into these hub menus, I'm going to explain these two options here. Filmmaker mode auto start will automatically switch into filmmaker mode if the content has a filmmaker mode metadata. But I don't think that there is currently any consumer content on the market with such metadata yet. But you know, I will test with various content that I have and see whether it triggers filmmaker mode. Reduced blue light again will make the color temperature warmer, but in my opinion, this will make the picture too red, especially if you already selected an accurate picture preset such as filmmaker mode. So I will leave this off for now. And if I go into the brightness submenu, you can see that there are various items here whose names or nomenclature has changed compared to previous LG OLEDs. So OLED pixel brightness is the new label for the old OLED light on previous LG OLEDs and this will determine the light output on screen. So if you increase it, the total light output on the TV will increase from the OLED panel and if you decrease it, then it will obviously darken the entire picture. We'll leave it on 25, which should be quite close to 100 nits. Contrast affects the digital white level if you increase it too much, you may be clipping the whiter than white detail or introduce some clipping of the RGB individual channels within the grayscale. So it is best to adjust this using a test pattern. Screen brightness is the new name for brightness which affects the digital black level. So if you lower it by too much, you will be crushing shadow detail but if you increase it by too much, you may be elevating the black level unnecessarily without any increase in shadow detail. 
and then auto dynamic contrast is basically just dynamic contrast this will create an s curve gamma in terms of compressing the shadows and the highlights to give you more pop but you may be losing some shadow and highlight detail as well so for an accurate picture i would normally leave this off peak brightness again it should be off for sdr but this will affect the white subpixel boosting and for hdr it should be on high and to show you i have forced engage hdr mode here and if we go into the picture menu go into advanced settings go into the brightness sub menu you can see that peak brightness is correctly set to high for the highest peak brightness that this tv is capable of and also for the correct tone mapping now I want to draw your attention to this HDR tone mapping here. This is actually the new label for what used to be called dynamic tone mapping and in essence, the TV is still going to be performing dynamic tone mapping if you select on for this HDR tone mapping. But I think that the term HDR tone mapping can be quite confusing because technically, all consumer TVs will be doing some sort of HDR tone mapping, especially on an 800 nit. OLED TV like the LG G1. So I think maybe LG should consider you know, switching the name back to dynamic tone mapping, which is more accurate. What dynamic tone mapping means is that you know the TV will be analyzing the picture on screen based on the incoming histogram and then adjust the tone curve dynamically. But by labeling it as HDR tone mapping, some consumers may wrongly assume that this should be on for all HDR content and then engage dynamic tone mapping unwittingly without realizing that sometimes dynamic tone mapping can brighten the picture artificially and deviate more from the creative intent. Now let's get back into SDR. And then gamma will determine how the input video signal is being translated to the output on screen so if you go for a lower gamma of 1.9 then you can see that it brightens the picture and 2.2 is probably more suitable for daytime viewing whereas 2.4 and VT1886 are essentially equal on an OLED TV because of the true zero candela per square meter blacks and then black level this will allow you to set either video level or PC level and this year the name has changed from last year's low and high to limited and full which is technically more correct so I want to comment LG for doing this so limited means that you are targeting a video level of 16 to 235 in an 8-bit SDR domain whereas full will be targeting a PC level of 0 to 255 again 8-bit SDR so if you leave it on auto, the TV hopefully will be selecting the correct video range depending on the incoming video signal. And then motion eye care is another option that adjusts the picture dynamically. So I don't really like all this automatic adjustment because I want an accurate picture. So I will leave this off. Next, we go into the color submenu. This video is sponsored by Box the online technology store. Visit box.co.uk for the best deals on TVs, soundbars and all your other technology needs. Color Def is the new label for what is known as color on previous LG OLEDs. So increasing it will increase the saturation and luminance of all colors in a global manner. Whereas decreasing color depth will desaturate the picture, eventually turning it monochrome. Let's go back to the default value of 50. Tint will adjust the hues of all the colors. And then under color gamut, there are two options here, auto detect and native. And again, auto detect is a new label for what is known as auto before. And I think that auto detect will be a more technically correct and easy to understand label for users out there. It means that this is actually the correct setting. It will auto detect the incoming video frame to decide whether to apply a Rec. 709 color gamut for SDR HDTV content or a Rec. 2020 color gamut for HDR 
you know, UHD BT2020 content. So you should always choose auto detect rather than going with native, which will just default to the native color gamut of the panel. So auto detect is always more accurate in terms of different picture content that you display on screen. And then we go into fine tune and fine tune is actually to do with the new color management system. In previous years, LG has put the CMS under the color management submenu, but this year they have put it under fine tune. To unlock the color management system, you will need to go into the color upgrade submenu. And the menu is quite translucent, so it may be difficult for you to see the text. So what I'm going to do is to try and put up a background that is relatively dark. So you can see that there are various options here, ranging from low, medium, high, and user. Now, low, medium, and high is very similar to, say, the live color setting on Sony TVs or LG's old dynamic color setting you know, from years ago. And what this will do is to boost the color saturation and also luminance of all the colors. But again, these are going to be quite inaccurate. So I think it is not wise for LG to use the label color upgrade because the common consumer may think that, you know, why would you not want to upgrade your colors and select maybe high, but this will just end up producing an inaccurate picture. What is useful in this menu is the user setting, which will allow you to adjust the CMS in terms of the three primary colors of red, green, and blue, and then the three secondary colors of cyan, magenta, and yellow. And because you can adjust the saturation, the tint, and also the luminance, tint is also hue. So this is an HSL color management system. And if we go back one step, we go into the white balance sub menu, and then you can see that the color temperature setting is now a slider rather than presets. So I think on previous LG OLEDs, there are say warm one, warm two, and things like that. But you know, it is a 50 point slider to cold 50, and then a 50 point slider all the way down to warm 50. And the default in the most accurate picture preset is always going to be warm 50. And then I don't think there have been any changes in terms of the white balance submenu in terms of the number of points that can be adjusted. So you get the two point white balance controls, you get the 10 point, and then you also get the 22 point. Now new for 2021, LG has listened to my advice and relabeled these to signal level percentage rather than IRE. It is still saying IRE here, which is an acronym for Institute of Radio Engineers, but the term is outdated now, especially in the digital world. So maybe going forward, LG should consider using video stimulus or percentage video stimulus to actually label these grayscale adjustment points. So I would again like to thank LG for listening to feedback and label this as signal level. And if you go into each of these signal, you can adjust various video stimulus intervals, and then you can adjust the luminance to try and get the gamma in line, and then adjust the red, green, and blue channels as well. And if we go out from the white balance submenu, and then that is the end of the color submenu. And if we go into clarity, Sharpness will just apply each enhancement and the uh, default is 10. I normally set it to 0 for absolutely neutral sharpening. Super resolution, again more edge enhancement. Noise reduction will apply some temporal noise reduction. Impact noise reduction will apply some spatial noise reduction for say combating mosquito noise and all sort of impact compression artifacts, but these will also reduce fine details. So for high quality content, I generally turn all the noise reduction options off. Sprocodation is LG's decontouring filter, which reduces in-content posterization. But bear in mind that 
it may also scrub away some very fine detail because the algorithm doesn't have a way to know what is posterization and what is true detail all the time. So just use this with some caution. Cinema screen is the new label for real cinema. And if you remember the functional real cinema from previous LG OLEDs, they serve to engage 5.5 pull down to remove telecynic judder from 24 frames per second movies and also apply some film mode interlacing for film-based interlaced content. So I think leaving this on is always a good idea to prevent telecynic judder inside movies. And through motion, if we go into this submenu, you can see that there are several different labels here which is slightly changed from previous true motions on LG TVs. Cinematic movement is the new name for Cinema Clear. I say new name, but it actually has been improved in terms of the amount of soap opera effect that is going to be introduced. So what LG is trying to do with this new setting is to smooth out the inherent 24p judder inside films and movies, but without introducing as much soap opera effect as before. So we shall test this out when we properly review this television, because I've just unboxed this <laughs> out of the box. And then natural will probably engage even more motion interpolation and smooth movement will be the smoothest, but it will also incur the most obvious so opera effect. And then if we go into user selection, you can see that the dejada and the blur settings are still present. Dejada will apply motion compensated frame interpolation or MCFI to low frame rate content. By low frame rate, I mean 24p, 25p, and 30p and then the blur will apply mcfi to high frame rate content high frame rate meaning 50p or 60p and then oled motion pro is 120 hertz black frame insertion and again you see various levels here low medium high and auto and again i will be testing all this when i review this television over the next few days or so. And then if I can turn true motion off. And then we go out. And another thing that I want to point out is that there is an apply to all inputs option, you know, on the main advanced settings page. And unlike previous years where apply to all inputs only applied the settings on that page, apply to all inputs on LG's new 2021 OLED TVs and also the rest of their 2021 TV range will indeed copy all the settings to all inputs. So this is an improvement certainly from a calibration front because you can calibrate one input and then just apply the calibrated settings to all inputs without needing to go into the individual sources and adjust it manually. So thanks again, LG, for doing this after years of lobbying on my part. <laughs> and then if we can go into the general submenu, I shall show you very, very quickly the game optimizer menu. But I think I should actually dedicate another video to this because there are plenty of things to talk about. And this video is long enough as it is. So I will be doing another video talking about these game optimizer settings and how it will actually affect the picture, the input lag, and also VRR. And then if we go into the support submenu, you can see that the anti-screen burn measures have all been put under the OLED screensaver submenu under support. So pixel cleaning will just start a manual compensation cycle. And this is equivalent to, I think, pixel refresher from before. Screen move is equivalent to a pixel shift from before. And what this will do is to shift the picture by several pixels to reduce the risk of image retention. And then adjust the logo brightness will detect static elements on screen and then dim the brightness. And just like the year before, there are two levels, low and high, which determines how aggressive the dimming should be. And you can also turn off adjust logo brightness altogether. I think 
on previous LG OLEDs, it is known as Adjust Logo Luminance. I will be spending the next few days running in and then testing this LG G1 OLED, which is equipped with an OLED EVO panel capable of even higher peak brightness than conventional OLEDs. So if you have any questions about this TV or if you have anything in particular that you want us to test, feel free to leave a comment in the YouTube section below. The picture menu has undergone a major revamp, which may feel quite strange to many of you. I certainly felt quite strange when I first saw these menus. But I'm sure we will all get used to it sooner or later, just like how we got used to not going to the pub or not eating out. Although I'm sure some of you don't like eating out anyway. But for more videos on LG's 2021 televisions, I've created a playlist here if you'd like to click on it. And I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.